Good evening, everyone. Hope you're doing okay, despite the uh, strange circumstances or kind of unfortunate circumstances we're meeting up today. Um, can you let me know if the audio and video is coming through okay? Uh, that's all I need to do to know, and then we can start rambling. Um... <laughs> hey, Mercer. I'm guessing the video is good. Then sounds good. Excellent. All right. Good evening, folks. Um, welcome to the stream. This is a weird one, because normally I would have like a whole bunch of stuff I would ramble about at the beginning, kind of like, this is what we've got to show, but we kind of talked about that in the update. Um, so this stream is really just about, it's, it's an opportunity to make ourselves available and um, let you ask us questions. The normal system is in effect, so... Is it Q exclamation mark to ask a question? Excla exclamation mark Q. Um, the mods will tell us because I always forget. Sorry. Um, do, do, do. I'm watching the chat waiting for that information to come through. There we go. Both of them at once. That's fantastic. Thank you. Excellent. All right. So register your questions. I will try and get through them. Um, welcome aboard. In fact, rather than just... A lot of me. Let's see if I can hit a button and make something else go. There we go. Have something a little more topical. Um, there we go. Right. So, yes, we, we wanted to make ourselves available because this was a bit of a... Unfortunate bit of news to give, just the fact that we're delaying. Um, so, we are here for, let's say, an hour. Um, if we need more, we can take more. If this only takes five minutes and questions run out, we can stop as well. That's not a problem. It's really just being here so we can natter and go, oh, that sucks a bit, doesn't it? Right. I will pop over to the question channel. Um, I'm saying, right. I need to remember where it is. Uh, stream questions. There we go. It's even highlighted for me. Okay. So people testing questions. Is this how you register questions? Certainly is. Um, how are we doing during the pandemic? We are doing actually fine. Um, there is, I mean, the one good thing about your chosen profession involving being a, a computer all the time and being completely remote is that, again, you're not very inconvenienced by it. So um, obviously we're taking precautions um, and we will continue to do so as things ramp up towards the end of the year. Um, but... But yeah, it hasn't... It would be it'd be very easy for us to say, oh yes, the delay is because of all these things that have been happening, extraordinary times, extraordinary circumstances thing, but it's not really. Um, it's, as we said in the thing, to do with uh, over-optimistic calculations and having to build more than we expected. Games are hard. Who knew? Everyone. <laughs> cool. Let's have a look. Um... Oh, thank you very much, Marianne. Um, is there a performance hit due to the water? Um, you know, that's a very good question. And not one I've tested. Um, Johnny would actually be the one to know. I believe he's around, unless he is getting some well-deserved sleep. Um, I know he was taking a little nap earlier. We will see. I'm sure he's already been in the chat and I just haven't seen him. Um, I am not keeping up at the moment. Um, but yes, it's something we'll check. Um, and... If it becomes a problem, it's probably maybe something we can tune. I'm not going to try and make promises there on that one. Um, but it's, I believe it's just like, actually, I don't know. I could say it's a post-process. I don't, I don't know. It's not really that, is it? Um, yeah, the man with the details will let us know. I have, I've been in the engine stuff for so long that I'm kind of out of touch with um, the kind of newer features. Johnny's just been killing it on. Um, doot, doot, doot. Let's have a look. You can hear a lot of doots from me. Um, what is the overall vision for how water will work by the time you get to early access? Good question. Um, that really depends on the final implementation of the terrain system. Um, we have some ideas on being able to define regions. Like the requirements for the terrain system are that we are able to build kind of plateaus and, and um, connections and all these kind of like open areas um, in a that look good, that look like part of Tailspire, and also... Um, are much have much lower data requirements for the given for a given area. So right here, like every single tile 
um, has data associated with it. If we're able to define a, l a large region, like the, the side of a hill, um, as a single thing, we can do it with much less data. And so everything's a bit sparser. And that's really the goal, um, besides obviously making good tooling for all of this so you can have caves and tunnels and all that kind of stuff. Um, we have ideas, but ideas are cheap and they often don't, um, you know, stand up to... Um, yeah, reality. I see a Johnny. Hello, sir. Sorry I didn't catch you earlier. Um, there isn't a significant performance hit, but it is pixel-based. There are things we can do to make it faster. Nice. Yeah. From the one who knows. Um, so, yes, I am... Um, I don't know exactly. It, it's going to be it's going to be volume based anyway. So you can you can make chunks of water. So you want a flying chunk of blow of water in the air? That will almost certainly be possible. Just like a flying chunk of land. Um, I, I I think of water much like chunks of land with different properties. You know, um, obviously there'll be behavioral things to do with both camera uh, for when you go inside it. Um, that's not how you go inside, Chris. This is how you go inside. And also, oh, those bubbles cool. I didn't make those, so I can say they're really cool. I saw them not long before you saw them, and it was like, oh. Um, let's get back out. And uh, what was I saying? I got distracted by bubbles. Yes. Ideas are cheap. We'll see how it turns out in the wash. Um, yeah. It's really cool. Um, is there expected to be a marketplace for campaigns, boards, and slabs? Um, marketplaces in buying things? Not sure. Um, it sounds really cool. It's something we've been talking about internally since the beginning. Um, but there is a lot to... There's a lot of extra requirements where you start throwing money into the mix. Um, so we'll see. But there will be community sites for sharing slabs and boards and all those kind of things. Yeah. It's really the only reason it doesn't exist already is we haven't uh, made board sharing a thing and campaign sharing. Um, those will come... They'll be possible with the new building board system. Like we could... Put it, we could put it in now, but it means that every copy of the board is a full copy of all the data, which when you get to big boards, which we're going towards, um, just isn't an efficient way to do that. Um, yes. Um, do, 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 do. Let's have a look. I'm not, um, the questions are going fast. It's really cool. Um, oh, thank you to the mod who is marking them ticked. That will help me a lot. Uh, will there be a way to quickly swap grass tiles to snow tiles um, so you don't have to build, rebuild the board to reflect seasonality? It does feel like... Uh, probably not with the tile system. And um, again, because we're going to the terrain system, that makes more sense for that to live in there. Um, so yeah, I, I'm, I don't expect that to live in the tile system. I do expect something along that lines or a kind of weather system um, which allows for kind of depositing snow or things like that to be part of the um, terrain system. Not sure. We'll see. Um, it really depends on implementations and things like this that we actually end up with. That's neat. Would there be any plans for integration with something like D&D Beyond? We would love to see uh, integration with D&D Beyond. In fact, okay, so... Recently, I did a devlog where I was talking about the um, Tailspire uh, URL scheme, which will then um, open things and do things inside Tailspire. I am aware of one user who I won't out right now because they're experimenting with things and it might not come to fruition. But they are making a plugin similar to, um, has been seen for Roll20, which um, allows you to basically click, click on uh, dice rolls from d d Beyond and have them uh, turned into Tailspire URLs. The idea being, that if um, we make a uh, URL scheme for getting dice into the game, that that will provide a piece of integration. Again, both sides of those still have unknowns, right? Like whether their thing ends up working and, and they release that, and then from our side, whether we do the dice site and it, if it feels right for the game. But there is definitely at least um, simple things we can do. And then, um, I mean, it would, be, it would be amazing to have official support, right? Um, Shout out to them. Um, we would love to. We would love to work with you on that. Um, have there been any ideas about how to implement rules? You know, I ha not since um, we last spoke. There's no evolution of that so far because there's all the things going on already. Um, I haven't looked at things which are stretch goals. Um, 
With the introduction of your partnership with Eldritch Foundry, is there a future goal to be able to import miniatures directly from Eldritch Foundry? Um, not currently. Um, so the partnership, of course, was allow us to use their tools to accelerate our pipeline, uh, the fruits of which you've already seen have begun. Um, the next bundle is kind of well underway. Um, obviously, we're taking little detours to make sure that given the delay, you have... Um, the things that we've said we're going to deliver uh but yeah that that is that is raring to go and things are looking really good on the art side it's been it's been a real joy to actually see that all come together um hey it's something we're open to um as with so many things i mean there are there are requirements on both sides there um we need to make sure that we have like creature sync for example which isn't something we have right now all the models um that you're using in the game come with the game and so there's some infrastructure there which is required for modding anyway um and then there's and then there's eldridge's side as well so we would have to talk to them about arranging that but they're a great bunch of people so um yeah who knows um is tail we were still slated to be available in early access yes um we there will be modding to what level it will be interesting at the very at the very least being able to get new minis into the game being able to get and i think being able to get tiles into the game um Johnny can correct me if I'm wrong on that one. But that's uh, that's what I think we were still aiming for. Um, yeah, we'll, we'll we'll keep you posted on that one as well. Like, if anything comes up with regards to Tailweaver, we'll let you know. It's going to be a little while before we start actually putting polish on that. Um, but yes. Is there going to be able to... Uh, is there going to be support for custom music to be uploaded into Tailspire? In the longer term, yes. In the shorter term, um, you'll be able to do it with modding um and then you can share those mods and they can bring them into the game as for streaming those things um on demand so you could just say ah oh, now i'm playing this track and we stream it to everyone um it sounds really cool it's something i'd like to look into but it's not my area of expertise and so i'll need to learn a bunch of stuff before i could start implementing that i'm gonna take a sip of this coffee because it smells like coffee and i like that um and some water as well so i don't just become a shivering mess Okay, I'm sure these sound effects are just wonderful for your ears, but that was loud. Right, questions. Is there a timeline for increasing the selection volume of copy-paste actions? Um, I'm not sure that they are going to increase massively because the, the issue is one of data size. Um, but what we can do is look into better options for compression, better options for like data packing and things like this. What we still need to add is support for creatures in slabs also um, obviously props will go in there um, they have some requirements which like props have have um, obviously will have free placement so we can't compact the data in exactly the same way as we could with tiles um, so i need to think about trade-offs and things there obviously there's in general going to be a lot more tiles than there are props i expect i mean you will have that density limit for example so we'll, we'll see on that one um Will there be a bundle so you can get, for example, four game keys for reduced price so the whole party can play? That is one of those things that every time we've we've brought it up internally, we go, that's a great idea. Really sounds good. And we haven't looked into the implementation of that on services like Steam. So it's almost certainly possible. Almost certainly something we can do. Uh, I haven't got an ETA or a timeline or anything certain for that. Um, I get to say that a lot, don't I? We don't know. We haven't planned. Um, I sp one second. I just want to see if something scrolled by. Do, 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 do. Uh, Johnny's confirming that the weather system is likely the answer, referring to the um, earlier question, and also correct about my last comment. So that is good. So far, I am not deviating from the spiels. Um, I spotted in the update the water had some little resin bubbles floating up, but not the ones in the initial splash, but some random on the depths. Can you show them off? Yes, I certainly can. Let's, uh, let's drag this water up and get down here and you will see. Hey, hey, are they cool? I love that stuff. I could probably do this for far too long. <laughs> oh dear. 
I uh, was meant to be implementing the, um, at least hooking up the sink and persistence of water earlier, which I did get done. But I will admit that for, like, for the first five minutes, I was just playing with water, which is a good sign. Um, but that is working now. So let's, uh, let's hope that, that doesn't break while I'm away. Um, what did I? Oh, yeah. Yeah, I should mention that as well. Uh, for just community stuff in general, I am going to be taking a week off. Basically, once the stream's done, I'm going to get it onto YouTube and then I'm going to be gone for a week because I'm going to decompress. Um, there's been a lot recently and um, yeah, it's time I took a little break. Um, but yes, when I get back, I, I really want to get started in line of sight. That'd be really cool. And uh, obviously by extension, Fog of War. We've got all these experiments done for that stuff already. So we know how to do the Fog of War and we know how to do uh, line of sight, the actual kind of uh, checks once we have the data. Um, I've got to rewrite the shaders and things like this that we're doing the compute stuff, but that's going to be okay. That's kind of a fairly known quantity. Uh, anyway, Bubbles, um, have you got any intention of merging the cutscene mode with photo mode so we could store a certain image taken in the photo mode on a block to show up? I said, you know, that is a very good question. I'm not sure, because there are some parts of that that probably don't fit. It's a good question. I actually don't have the answer to that one. I I know we haven't had that discussion internally. Johnny probably has some ideas on this, because he has good thoughts on a lot of this kind of stuff. Um, but yes, I will I will read out Johnny's answer if it turns up in the chat, and, and I see it. Um, any chance the final version of water will be true flowing water, such as a block in Minecraft that water flows? Almost certainly not. Um, the computation around that kind of thing, given that our world isn't just t isn't just blocks, and I don't say just blocks, to get Minecraft to run well, all that stuff, that is hard work. Like serious engineering has gone into that. Um, but we have a different data model. We have a different kind of set of things we're doing. So very unlikely that we'll have true flowing water, like simulation based. Um, oh, I wish I could remember there's this person Nell, I think, on Twitter, who is doing a kind of um, full GPU, voxely, crazy fluid thing that you should probably check out because it's dope. But that's totally not Telspar related. Uh, yeah, I just got a shout out to someone doing really cool stuff. Um, can you talk about a little about the partnership for character design? I. That's a good question. Um, I don't know what to say. I mean. Uh, Eldritch Foundry reached out to us fairly early on. Um, I think it was, I can't remember if it was during the Kickstarter or shortly after it. Um, they Again, we've been chatting for a while. They're a great bunch of people. And uh, we like their tools. And their, and their miniatures have a, a style which is very conducive uh, with the kind of style that we've been doing already. And so they made for really great bases for working from. So we, again, did a deal with them to be allowed to... Yeah, use this X number of miniatures for X period, of, like over X period of time. It, it's um, it's been great. It's really cool. I, I'm again like because I'm the uh, I see a lot of the art stuff in the way that you do, just a little bit earlier. Um, I live so much in the code, but it has been really cool, and it's just been really nice seeing that together. They've they have been over backwards to uh, be helpful. It's been amazing. Um, just doing things with the pipeline and stuff like this, so we can get the data we need in the in the ways that we need it really cool and then we obviously we throw our our magic shader source on top of it which um makes everything look kind of tail spirey which is really nice um i hope that is some kind of answer oh i should check to see what johnny said as well dun, 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 dun. we do want to expand the cutscene mode to have more controls found in photo mode hey there we go yeah, some stuff, um, like, it's kind of good that those are separate. There are good reasons not to have it be exactly the same. Um, but yes, there's definitely things we can do with that. Let's have a look. Um, is the Mac version of the game still coming? Um, yeah. I mean, it's still on the same roadmap as it ever was, which is long term. Um, we've got to get, you know, we've got to build, get the early access out. We've got to get V1 as well. Um, I don't know where Mac fits into that. I mean, some parts of it are seemingly trivial right trivial right because you can go into unity and you can say i'm making a mac build but there are things like okay the assets have to be built for mac how does that affect the modding community um what do we have to rebuild um things like this what areas um are platform specific of the game and we need to rewrite those for mac luckily they are i think minimal 
what is Mac going to be doing um, going forward with CPUs and GPUs? How does that affect um, performance? Um, like, because we have to, obviously we have to prioritize. I think after the initial kind of like, obviously our past getting it working, a big thing is like, okay, can we run better on things with integrated GPUs? I mean, if that's a larger um, portion of the player base, like that's more stories being told, right? Um, and I know that's kind of catch-22, right? Because if we don't have a Mac version, how can there be a Mac community? But yeah, it, there's there's variables in there that go beyond just flicking the switch on Unity, right? So um, yeah, it's going to take research. But we'll, I mean, as usual with all the devlogs, we'll just try and keep you as informed as possible. Um, as much as I can write. Um have you sought inspiration from Minecraft? It's aut it's uh, automatically generated, but you do a lot better. Um, I mean, Minecraft is an inspiring thing regardless, so I suppose in that way, for sure. Um, I've looked at their um, meshing um, algorithm for inspiration with generating meshes for the um, Fog of War. It's a slightly different beast. I mean, like, it's a, it's a um, user-generated content game. Um, so it's very much, like, you, you have similar kind of um, issues and problems. Um, obviously, we're doing things in a kind of very mesh kind of, like, model uh, kind of focused, as opposed to one which is all around the voxels. Um, yeah, so, I mean, it's hard not to be inspired but in some fashion by Minecraft, just in that kind of, they've done a great job. And uh, they've got a really strong community, and yeah, it's, it's cool. It's cool stuff. Um, but yeah, like directly, like as an auto generation thing, I suppose is actually part of the question. No, um, the main thing is okay. So my point of view on these, and I think it's kind of shared with members of the team as well, is um, the auto, like the procedural generation, is a tool that you give to creators in order to help them build things. Um, and the story is what's dominating um, the environment. So generating an environment and fitting a story inside it is cool and it's really tempting and it's the kind of stuff that I got into um, game dev being really, really excited about. Um, just like, I'm going to generate worlds and then we'll lay little stories out on them, which is really cool. But um, the most important thing is we make this kind of creation experience and playing experience like top-notch. Yeah, that's a bit waffly, but... Um, Yes, but there are there are already tools out for doing some procedural generation stuff as well, uh, so that is very cool. I love that site where you can just set things out and it just generates slabs for you. That's so cool. Any plans on integrating D and D Beyond, uh, similar to Beyond Twenty for VTT? I think I covered that already. Um, there's there's one uh, user who is tinkering around with some of that stuff. We would love to do it officially. Um, we haven't heard any word on that so far from them. Um, but we are super open to that stuff. Um, how does the character customization work as of now, or how do you plan uh, for it to work? Character customization, as in the tinting? If it was about tinting, leave a little thing, and I will I will jump back to your question. To the mods, please don't tick that one as as uh, answered yet, so I can come back to it. Um, actually, I'll, I'll I'll undo that. Oh no, did it the wrong way. Um, with the addition of the adjustments to settings, is there anything else that will make Tailspire run more officially on lesser power computers? Yes. I mean, the first thing is this one that I'm showing you on the screen right now. This one is running uh, using um, Unity's game object um, abstraction over data. And there is just a limit to how far you can push that. When you get 100,000 objects, even if they're the simplest objects in the world, it starts to struggle. And obviously we're pushing far beyond that um so yeah the, all of the engine work we've been doing is to make sure that we can do better um and so we're seeing some of that stuff already um i wonder if i've got a kind of basic example i can show um this is super prototypey and uh so we, we put that little clip out earlier um showing that there were performance improvements um i'm I've already got another branch uh, which has significant improvements on top of that as far as performance uh, for rendering. Um, this is also not done. So just 
thing telling me that it should terminate because we are running a um I'm running on a local server. My laptop's here being the server for the for the game right now. Um Okay. So this is gonna take a few seconds to load. Oh, that's actually the same scene. Um without water you'll notice because this is a different dev branch which has a load of things not finished yet. Uh dots test, here we go. Um so and I should do perhaps. Okay, so this scene, I'm not sure how it's going to run with streaming and everything on. But yeah, okay, we're getting around 60 FPS. It'll probably drop a little here. Oh no, we're doing all right. So we're getting a solid 60 FPS with this. Um, this would run at around 25 FPS on the old one. Um, it's at its slowest right now um, when we're zoomed out. Um, but as soon as you get down to actually the distance you're playing, it's uh, it's really solid. Um, yeah, this would this would struggle before. And so there is a lot of there's a lot of work on this stuff coming. Um, let's see if I can move out a bit. You know, there there is um, we can really push this thing. Um, it's really cool when you get a tower of like thousands of units high and you just whoop 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 whoop, whoop and it just disappears. Um, so yeah, there are there are performance improvements coming. Everything we do for performance obviously helps the lower end as well as the higher end, unless we do something really specific that isn't supported on high end stuff, on low end stuff. Sorry, um, but most of the things, as long as Shader Model Five is supported, this works, and that is already a requirement. So if it's running today, we can make it faster. Um, even this is currently very bound by um, the culling um, system, the way we're currently doing that. So. Uh, yeah, there are, there are still problems um, to fix there. I, I need to make bigger batches to make. Anyway, that will get off into a big technical chat if I go rambling in that direction. Um, Eagle Eye, you will spot also that the shaders are wrong on the fire down here. The light appears to be missing. I know why. I was uh, disabling scripts for things that aren't meant to be in view. Clearly that isn't working right. But the general idea is things are getting faster. It's gone from unplayable to 60 FPS, which is good start, you know, and because we need to support more than this. But these these are very dense builds. Um, Australia is very good at that kind of stuff. Um, also, something that I could probably show is that once um, once tile sets are loaded, let me move out a bit to get some room and drop the fog multiplier. And let's see if. Yeah, let's copy this again. Uh, you can see that things spawn really fast. So that was quite a few tiles. Um, and you can just paste and it's immediately there. Right, that's a significant jump over the old one. And that's just down to basically we've rewritten a whole ton of stuff. So yeah, that's the... Um, I don't know. There are things coming. Um, and let's go back to water because it's fun to look at. And we can get bubbles. And who doesn't love bubbles? And then I'll find questions again. Um, yeah, let's get rid of fraps. Thank you, fraps. Okay. Um, now I completely derailed myself. I should find Discord. Where did I leave you, Discord? There you are. Um, and I should see if that question was about, who was that asked by? Snov. Snov, snov, snov. Uh, Johnny's saying, we'll be looking into the character creator once the terrain is out. We do need to prototype exactly how it works and nothing yet. Tintinwing will be available much sooner. Um, I know that some of our internal chats have been on the lines of, it'd be really cool if from the main screen that you could go to a place where you can pick your mini and set things up and customize all that stuff and then bring them into campaigns uh, so you have all that stuff ready to go. Um, that sounds like a lot of fun. Uh, we'll see how that turns out. So that is that. What happened to the hair? Um, you know, sometimes you just have to let them go. Um, they have other things to do in the world. Uh, Miriam saying, sorry if I answered this one before, but is there any plans on a particle system for rain, falling snow and such? Yes, weather system will be coming down the line. Um, I doubt we'll just have like random particle emitters or anything like that because it's a bit too, I don't know. Um, we, we normally make something into um, a system that feels good in the game rather than just being arbitrary spawn um, kind of, you know, 
here's a picture of um, Jake the dog, and you can make a thousand of those shoot out of the ground. I mean, that's fun, but um, generally we make something into a system. Is there a link or um, way to keep up with the patch or whatever it is that would allow people to import um, dice rolls from D&D Beyond? Is there a link to keep up to keep updated on the patch or whatever it is? Um, to keep updated. Well, anything that's made is going to be into the game, right? Like so, uh, and then any third-party um, system will be will be theirs. So we wouldn't have control over that. But what we will do is we'll um, once we have started implementing an API, if that's the direction we do, we indeed go. It's, it's likely, but we still need to experiment. So I'm not promising there. Um, then we'll document the API so other people can hook into it and make their own tools and stuff. Um, any plans on vignettes, handouts, um, and world maps for TS? We've definitely uh, seen some vignette modes and things that look kind of cool, and um, we've thought about it. It's because it's not on our... Actually, did we mention something like that in the last stream? I, you know, I really should have reviewed. <laughs> I should have had the list of things, because we're going on my memory, and my memory is dreadful. Um, check on the big list of stuff we put out... Um, the big feature request update we put out a good few months back uh, because that will probably have info on whether like vignette in general is um, what our kind of promises were on that one and uh, but yes we, there's no but there's been no fundamental plan changes on vignette or anything like that um, we want to be able to get to sharing things but there's technology things involved as well um, can you elaborate on the plans for the terrain system like, is it going to be sculptable, smoothly sloping? I mean, probably not. I mean, that's the that's the thing, right? Like, what does it mean for it to be Tailspire, to be to look right for Tailspire? What does it mean for the interaction? I mean, so I wouldn't, I wouldn't expect a, a completely like a um, real time cuttable like. Uh, I I don't even know how to put it. Um, we're not just going to shove marching cubes over the entire world and uh, do a voxel sculpt system. I suppose that is that is one way. Um, it is more likely to be something controlled and where we have that ensures that the data is good and sparse across for large boards and things like this. Um, yeah, it all depends on the experiments. All depends on the experiments and what the results of those are. Um, how good is the coffee? It's good stuff. It's a gift from a friend as well, so it's really nice. Um, two ways that it's good are there any plans for the ability to import jpeg or png files to present to players that kind of goes in with the vignette stuff um yeah it's very sensible um not sure how we want to do it exactly um but we'll keep you posted have you how have you thought on distribute these mods i mean the idea of using a steam thingy for mods is a thing okay yeah so the the way we'd really like to do it is something that's not attached to a particular store um because that forces the community into a particular store i mean obviously right now we're only selling going to be selling on steam to start off with um so that does push people there but we want to be able to be in more places in future because choices um when we do that we don't want to bisect the community across different workshop environments so what we'd like to do is to be able to um provide an api so that people like those running um, Tail Bazaar and Tails Tavern can um, provide repositories which then hook into, you can subscribe to from Tailspire and then you'll be able to download mods from there. That's the goal. Um, and then obviously when things get updated on those sites, you get like information saying, hey, there's an update for X and then you can download that. Um, and then, yeah, obviously that means that if those sources go down, those things would no longer be available, but that's the risk regardless, right? And I think it's more important to have those kind of things decentralized um, so that we don't... I mean, you can look at YouTube and what happens to content policing and things like this. Um, when you have stuff, people are going to, like, kind of knock on your door and say, like, that they want certain things from you. So it's best we kind of get that out into the community and make that as robust as possible. Um... As current copy paste is limited to the Windows clipboard size, that's not true. Um, are there any plans to allow a text file import and export? We wouldn't do text file because that would be really inefficient compared to just saving binary. 
Um, the thing isn't limited by Windows clipboard size at all. It's limited by me. Uh, the limit is that the the um, the data that's decoded from that string must be less than I think 32k. And the reason for that is we have to be able to sync it to all the other players in a timely fashion. Otherwise, the board building experience gets really sucky. Um, and obviously messages can go awry when you're sending them so they might need to be resent and stuff like this so you get those kind of potential delays in there um, the board building has to be ordered for everything to be robust um, and that's why undo and redo can work across a bunch of people at the same time building um, but that just does put practical limits on um, what what that size can be um, oh, sorry got an itchy nose um Yes, so th those the, the limits are imposed by me. Um, so what we can do, though, is how much stuff can you fit in that space, right? Like, how do we organize data? And how do we pack data so that it compresses better? Can we find um, better open source kind of compression things that we can use to build into the game and then make those available? Because um, we need to make sure that people can build tools to interface with that, etc. So, yeah, that's the... Um, that's the general idea. We've been pretty lazy so far. We've just used like the standard compression that you find in C Sharp, and there's definitely things we could do to improve that. And right now, I barely do anything with the data uh, to make it more compact. So there's a ton of stuff I could do there. Um, yeah. And then obviously, the more the better things compress, the more you fit into that 30 whatever k. It's probably 32 k. Um, so the bigger the slabs are. Um, you'll notice that if you the number of like if you took one kind of tile and made a big slab and copied that the biggest one of those is bigger than the biggest slab you could make if you did one of every kind of tile and that's because of compressibility will there be a way to recolor the water and how does the water look uh, with various graphical filters that's a great question um the yes we are looking at uh, recoloring water um in future as for how it works with other effects, that I don't know. Um, I I think Johnny is probably going no at the moment because this is a like this is the prototype and it's unfinished. Um, but obviously, like yeah, day and night works and post effects greens. Okay, that doesn't show up so much. So bleach, yeah. So they're they're probably fighting each other at the moment. But yeah, they're um. Whoa. So uh, isolating reds. So yeah, it's a, uh, it is definitely something that does interact with it. Holy Jesus! Look at that. Um, and we'll probably find ways to make that more intuitive uh, as time goes by. Um, yeah, good question though. I haven't even played with that yet. It shows how how little time there has been since like this stuff becoming available, and we're telling you that okay. This is the this is the situation. Uh, we try and keep that things pretty pretty tight. Follow up to the copy paste question: Has it been considered um, being able to? Um, sorry. Has consideration been given to allow copy paste volume to follow tile contours rather than registering as single block? Yes, yes, uh, I do know what you mean. Um, yeah, there are different um, ways. It's definitely yeah. Oh, man. I wish I could remember some of the conversations around copy and paste now. Um, the answer is yes. Uh, we definitely want to support, should have like clipping supported with it as well, which would go a long way into fixing it in a not elegant way, but it would, it would work. Um, yes. There, there, there will probably be more evolution in that future. That's that's one thing I can say for sure. That would be neat. We'd have to... Oh, that's, that's an interesting one. How that's going to work with the collision system and stuff. Um, another question, but glad to hear you're taking a break from it. Sometimes you need to let stuff kick around while you're working on it. Yeah, man, I, I'm just really looking forward to um, some good chill uh, with my partner and just getting some sleep. It's going to be nice. Um... I have been sleeping, but um, it would be nice not to be thinking about what I'm working on tomorrow for a few days. Will there be waterfall blocks? Will this be something to be handled by the terrain system? Certainly a terrain system. Um, we're going to get away from terrain blocks in the broad sense um, as much as possible. Um, and again, that was something that will help with performance. 
almost certainly i mean it's, it's one of those things even though i don't know what the system will eventually look like i know what this system looks like and where its limiting characteristics kind of are and i know that with something sparser we can do smarter things so yeah it's um uh, do goblins float and if they do how many rocks are needed to make them sink <laughs> Um, creatures at the moment just drop straight to the bottom. We've thought about, um, and so you normally use, um, where are goblins? Why did I drag it out like that? Come on, Chris, it's your game. Right, so at the moment they just drop right to the bottom. Let's drag you uphill. Do, do, do. And so if I drop they go straight to the bottom one of the things we were thinking was that um we could turn on if you drop into the water we could turn on flying and then keep you at the surface um because obviously we've got and then you you could just kind of be bobbing there which would be kind of cute um but yeah using flying for the underwater um kind of swimming control seems to work really well and that's just that's just neat oh no i don't want to get rid of water that is a crime I'm actually gonna have him bobbing because it just makes me makes me happy. <laughs> All right, focus, Chris. Um, did I answer that question? There we go. Okay, yes. Any opportunity of getting extra copies during early access? Um, yeah, I mean the the whole point of early access is that's when we make it available on Steam to everyone. Um, so yeah, you'll just be able to buy an extra copy, no problem. Um, Serious question, though. Why stop the daily messages? We missed them. Uh, recently, mainly um, my own morale, I suppose. Um, when I get really stuck into the some of the kind of technical systems that take a long time to do, um, yeah, it's just hard to write about every day. Um, like, still working on the thing. Um, yeah, it's kind of hard to explain, I guess. Yeah, some days it's just difficult to write after you've been struggling all day. Um, it's a lot easier when, when you've got days where it's like, I did this and this. That feels really good, you know? Um, when it's just like, I spent another day staring at the goddamn GPU and wondering what I've done, that things are out of order and culling is glitching and how the hell is this going to work on time? And ah, yeah, th those days are, are tricky. And Arguably, those are some of the more useful things to write about because, you know, that's the reality of developing things. But, I mean, at the same time, some days you're just out of energy, man. Will you be using Steam Workshop to handle player main assets? No. Um, for the reasons stated before. Is there a way to get the game key for my friends? No. Um, not until early access, at which point we'll be selling copies. That's the real bummer about today, right? Is that early access is delayed, so it's going to be longer before we can let more people in. Yeah, I'm sorry about that. All of us want that to be sooner. Um, it sucks. I'm not trying to be dismissive there either. I'm just kind of like mentally guarded from how much it sucks for us <laughs> to be doing this. So it's kind of like gallows humor, I guess. Um, where are you originally from? Um, I'm from the UK, uh, from England. Uh, Johnny's from Norway. And uh, Jason's uh, from US. Hannah's from Canada. Uh, Rachel, I believe, is from the US as well. Um, yeah, we're from we're from around, but I live over in Oslo now. Um, yeah. Um, would you consider allowing free camera mode, like the photo mode and build mode? No, that's not something we're looking to do. Um, we we again we've played with lots of things, but it's like that when people say, "Oh, it'd be really good to have top down, um, like top down mode for building would feel great." Like really? Because when we tried it, it felt terrible, like genuinely terrible. But the good news is uh, there are the folks who do the DLL hacking as well. So I highly recommend finding that little uh, secret sub channel and uh, you can find the mods there where people have been hacking in different um, features like orthographic mode for everywhere and things like this. Um, because it's it's good to have that, for, especially for things that we aren't going to support long term. Any plans to integrate uh, photo mode into cinematic mode? I think we mentioned that one before. Will there be crashing waves and larger waves of water? That that will be really tricky and interesting, and I don't know. If it is, it's a long way out. Let's put it that way. One thing I've noticed is that grids, or they're that are used in uh, map making, are not obvious um, with the moment. Is there a way to implement a grid piece movement on the GM's end? Um, yes, you can turn on, um, it's experimental at the moment because it has bugs, 
Where did we put it? Um, creature snap to grid. You can turn that on, and then your creatures will snap to the grid. Um, also, we could do a, a lot better job with making it evident where the grid is. Like you say, it's not super obvious, and then in, obviously in combat scenarios, that really matters. So, um, yeah. Yeah, there's, there's more to do there, for sure. Um, any plan to be able to do a quick build for dungeons or out zone by big blocks or procedurally if there'll be a godsend for the DMs. We really want to make better tooling for building in general. Um, when it comes to outdoor zones, we are relying on the magical terrain system that we're putting so much weight on um, to handle making that quicker for the outdoor stuff. Um, but there's a lot we could do for building interiors, right? So... Um, we've had discussions about a kind of blueprint system that would let you kind of drag things out and then apply tiles to the blueprints, like filling in walls and floors and things like this. Johnny's got some ideas on that, but obviously they take iteration and time, so that's one thing in the shorter term, one of the tickets I need to try, is what happens if you um, can associate a corner tile with a wall tile, and if you drag it out, does making a room that way feel any good? Um, what problems does that bring in? Yeah, all that kind of stuff. There is technical stuff to do there um, and try out and see. Um, it doesn't go in if it doesn't feel right, that's for sure. Um, I understand the point of view, but let's say you walk into an uh, opening in a mountain, meaning instead of making the mountain manually, get the software to make the mountain. Uh, you sort of have sliders for, da, 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 um, yeah, for the different parameters, and then you can say done, and then change it manually. It, it makes sense. I hear what you're saying. Um, it really depends on um so that i suppose that's that's one question is can you um make slabs out of terrain that's a really good question i actually haven't thought about the answer to so um maybe that's the thing and then you can just go mountain and you can get a pre-made mountain and then you can edit it right um making a actually integrating slabs and uh community content into uh, the side panel here to build them like you would build with tiles is something we really want to do and it's gonna uh, what we really want is we want to get that in because once it's in um we can see what building means when you have an entire community's worth of content at your fingertips right uh, because if you're building every house that takes a long time if you can type house and then place five different ones and you've got half a vill village done that's a huge difference and it changes the need for certain features when you have that in hand, that it's something we can only do by playtesting. So it's uh, not the most satisfying answer, but it is one we like. We care about the answer. We've got to go through the steps to get it. Um, any update on the rule system? Maybe character sheets? As I mentioned earlier, I haven't looked into that um, at all um, in a while because that's a um, stretch goal. And we've got to get the core stuff there first. Uh, will there be a way to mod the game to have custom lighting like colored fire and such? Absolutely. The scripting engine already supports um, setting color on lights. Um, and so, yeah, we'll expose that. And you can make your own, you can mod your own tiles then. Um, is there or will there ever be a way to enter a numerical height into the sliders so that it can be moved to move directly to a predetermined height for camera, etc.? Good question. Not sure. Um, like, I assume you mean these sliders down here? I don't know. And that's an interesting one, too. How do you find out the right height? And in this case, the answer wouldn't be because the map says so. Because So one of the things with Tailspire and other things, uh, other tile-type systems, like Dwarven Forge and things like this, is that you're working, you're playing with toys, right? This is an approximation of something real. Uh, this hill is never going to be the exact hill in the world. Um, this goblin is never going to be the exact kind of that little nick in his ear that he got f like three years ago from a fight and then etc, etc, etc. These are always going to be approximations. And so whilst we do have to have some things, like for the rulers, we need to have some units um, and we let you pick what those units are, there is this really weird inflection point where you use the game as a source of truth and also understanding that it's entirely an approximation. And so when it comes to things like entering numeric values for sliders, I hear you. I get really confused on what side of the line that is with treating it as a abstraction and a 
kind of measure of reality. It's a tough question. Really good one, though. Um, there was a comment on um, how Path of Exile was using Steam. Um, have you thought about having your own download location you can log into shows you're allowed to download Tailspire? Um, building our own system for that is a lot of work. One of the things Steam do very much understand is that the amount of work that goes into making what they have, and they price it pretty savvily, so it kind of doesn't make sense to do it yourself a lot of the time. I, yeah, again, it's like, yes, that would be neat, given unlimited time. Um, options are always nice, right? But um, yeah, I, I, that's very much out of our scope for now. Um, at least. I wasn't able to pick up the game uh, since I found you guys this summer, but I've been following you all. Great work so far. Thank you very much. Take your time. Will you... Uh, Nat, I really appreciate it too. Will you guys um, add in the ability to, to load overlay pictures to help create geometry for the terrain? Um, that's not something we're planning on doing. Um, no. Um, again, like with that abstraction versus reality thing, like a wall in on a map can be infinitely thin. They're never going to be infinitely thin in Tailspire, and they also have to be produced to feel like miniatures. The the it's really this is one of the things that's kind of not obvious until you try it. It's like when at one point we put in like cardboard um, tiles on bases to use instead of creatures to see what it felt like. It was horrifying to us. It felt like the game, like it just didn't feel like Tailspire anymore to us, and it was like a game that we wouldn't want to work on. And that's why they haven't been in there at all. Totally fine for you guys to mod that in when the modding support comes. But we know that it makes us feel sad. Um, again, with the um, the miniature feel is very important to Tailspire. It's why this looks like resin. It's why like the things feel a certain way. Uh, because there's that aesthetic we're, we're going for and working with. It's meant to be like tiles. So there is never going to be a point where we'll have a wall that is like papery thin. So it's, in those cases, it doesn't make sense to put down a map of somewhere that you can't match anyway, you know? Um, even when you use systems like, uh, oh, what was it called? Was it True Tiles? Someone came up with a really nice approach for uh, handling tiles, which allowed full t almost full tile space. It still had some of the issues that um, systems like Tailspire have when you're joining corners and things like this in certain configurations. Um, less obvious because the walls were thinner, but it was um, it was neat. Um, let's have a look. We are. Do dice roll differently in water? No. Um, I think. My gut tells me that would be really annoying. It would be fun momentarily. It's like I, I can't show it here because I don't have the audio hooked up to the stream. But when you go underwater, you get that muffled effect. And then the audio over 30 seconds fades back into its normal vol its, its new normal quality, right? It, it becomes non muffled. And. Um, same with like when you're moving water, it animates more than when it's static, and it just animates very slowly um, when you're not changing it. And it's those things of there is a really nice effect to have for a moment that feels really good and feels really responsive to your actions, and then you want the board to kind of get out of your way and let you tell your story. So if dice, for example, had really low gravity underwater, that means a roll would take five times longer. Is that good? Is that bad? I think that will become very annoying very fast. Um, so that's my gut reaction on that. Again, um, we'll see. Um, so someone's asking about the water and saying, is there a way to control the speed of it? Well, every time, every time you let go of this slider, it adjusts for everyone who's connected to the game. Um, so that it isn't an automatic speed, which makes sense. Like if you're doing kind of encounter based, and you're saying, ah, oh, every minute the water is rising X feet, then what you probably want to do is be able to have a round and then increase the water size, or increase the water, sorry, the water size, the water height, or increase it after everyone's turn, or things like that. that keeping that in control of the GM feels right to us. Um, Feats of Dice saying, just curious, as I have little to no knowledge of how game development works, what does what was the reason to have Tailspire on Steam instead of as a set download, a separate down? Ugh, why can't I read? Uh, instead of as a standalone download XE where people could just have 
export to download. Um, making things and supporting them, including purchasing and handling uh, keys that you want to give out to reviewers and keys you want to give out to streamers to do certain things and um, people who have access and people that don't and, and some general kind of control of um, piracy and the initial thing because I mean if, if your Kickstarter is one of the rewards of your Kickstarter is access to the game earlier than other people then that being compromised like destroys some of the validity of the kick it, it, it's tricky um, and the big ones hey, you want to sell something in different countries. How does that work? How do the taxes work? How do you get that information across? How do you present the things so people don't come and chase you down with hammers and say, where's my money? Um, yeah, it's uh, it's hard. There is so much more to it. Anytime humans are involved, things get really messy. Um, code is relatively simple compared to real life, and I like it that way. So having someone else handle all that stuff is the hard bit. So yeah, putting a file on a server and having people download it, no problem. That would be easy. Um, handling everything that makes it like a game sale and all this kind of stuff and a successful like backing thing, that's hard. And uh, and these companies know it. That's why they exist. Like, um, yeah, it's cool. Great question. Like, it, it is, it's surprising, actually. The more you look into it and you go, oh yeah, I've got to handle this case or... Like the amount of times we've spent talking to lawyers and stuff like this, and it's like, oh yeah, in this particular state in the US, the law is different from this one, and so this legal clause needs to be blah, 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 blah. and then the European lawyers look at it and go, oh, they want something different. And, oh, have you, yeah, why you haven't seen the terms of service yet? It's because that's still, still in process. Painful. Um, saying that though, the lawyers we are working with have been really, really good. They've been, we, us constantly hammering them with questions and things. They've been very open to that. So that is nice. Um, loaded question. Oh, here it comes. Uh, hey, talk. Good to see you. Um, are Johnny and Jason going to be doing anything next week at this time? <laughs> Same little self-promotion there. I will not bite with your loaded question. I wouldn't know. I'm going to be. I'm going to be unavailable, my friend. I'm going to be on holidays. So I do not know such things. It is not my business. Um, yeah. Uh, okay. So, so seeing it, seeing as uh, Re has left a note next to this internally, I will say that for everyone that uh, Jason and I, uh, Jason and I, <laughs> I'm so tired. Jason and Johnny are going to be joining uh, Tog DM on stream to hang out next week. So there you go. I bit. Um. Not a question. Um, my friends and I were all able to get the game. Um, oh, that's cool. Uh, it's been amazing from a distance gaming during the time we're all going through. I wanted to thank you for that. And I'm looking forward to everyone else being able to enjoy that. Oh, thank you so much. That is really nice. Um, I have skipped some questions. I certainly have. Will you create minis of the Bouncing Rock team? No. Um... When will we see the build you're currently showing off released? That is a really good question. So the beta people will get access to this before it goes out into early access, almost certainly. Right, I'm saying this because that's what I expect. I haven't discussed this with the rest of the team, but it, it seems the way we're normally doing things is like we're building features, we ship the features, you guys test them. And then like this switch from beta to early access for the people who are already in the beta is almost symbolic right like we hit a switch and suddenly everyone can buy a copy but you already have the game that's shipping so it's very unlikely that on early access day you guys will receive anything new you'll probably already have the files on your things so you won't even see an update that's what i assume based on my understanding of steam and stuff i could be completely wrong um as soon as we can get it stable, like the fact that we have like we have a branch just for water now, and we have a branch just with some of that stuff on, um, there is a lot still to do. Um, but I feel like I, I've got through the unknown parts. Like we, we've we've had some we've had some technical fun, um, and I'm I'm glad we're we're through that bit. Um, so yes, I would I would expect you to get these performance things before early access ships. Why am I doing that one? I meant to be on this computer. Okay. Um, are we going to have aquatic creatures like shark and octopi? That would be awesome, and I can't see why not. That'd be great. Yeah. 
I mean, it hasn't made sense. That's the thing. Like, it hasn't made sense to do those before we gave everyone water. And the delay has meant that water has arrived effectively sooner. So, that's one thing. Um, a suggestion. Could you create water tiles in the same uh, in the style of water inside the Mortmouth Fountain? Yes, we could. And it would be a nightmare uh, for me on the data side. The problem is that, like I was saying, like there is a data cost to every tile. And dragging out large slabs, I mean, you can see this is kind of a skin, right? Like there's, there's stacks of tiles going up. Um, and then the largest areas that are dragged out are, uh, let's get this water up a bit, are um, like these floor areas. But they're only essentially like 2D, right? Um, you're dragging out one big flat slab. But if you have a volume that you're dragging out, um, rather than being whatever the length of the side is squared, you're going up by the cube of that number. And that is a real problem for um, for sync, for everything else, for rendering at any kind of reasonable speed. Um, you think we struggle now? We would really struggle if it was just blocks. The way Minecraft do that and, and games like that is completely different. And that's how they handle volumes. Um, they're working explicitly with volume data in a different way. Um, yeah, trade-offs are the trade-offs are the approaches. Um, but yes, we use it in very limited senses, like in the um, like you've seen in the fountain. We use the shader on a tile, but to actually use them to build would cause us a lot of problems. Again, not that computer, Chris. Okay, I think we're. Any Fog of War teasers? No, nothing new. Um, yeah, the last stuff that I posted was the last time I was working on, on the actual Fog of War visuals. I really need to do some more experiments with different meshing approaches, um, which I'll do once. Um, so, so, okay, the roadmap, like, code-wise for Fog of War goes like this. I've got to rewrite the um, way we're capturing... Um, the scene from the point of view of a creature. So whenever you move this chap, we render the entire scene in 360 degrees into a cube map. And that's his vision, right? It stores the depths in all the directions to everything. And then we um, can check the positions of creatures against those depths. We do it by actually rendering them um, and then looking out where their fragments, the depth of the fragment in the scene and comparing it to the, um, the uh, depth in that cube map. That tells us if pixels of that object are visible according to this guy. And then we can say, okay, that creature is visible, that creature is not visible, and stuff like that. But that 3D information is also what we can use for the fog of war. We take that and we update all of the zones around you. They run this shader that run this, um, yeah, it is a compute shader that checks, okay, for every cell, like, is the inside of that cell visible from the point of view of this guy? And if it is, then we can reveal that cell. Once that's done, that produces masks that get shipped down to the CPU side, and then we regenerate meshes based on that. Um, the meshes are generated in a Minecraft-style approach. Um, there are some good articles out there which I've linked in devlogs from way back, so if you want to check those, um, it's really cool. Yeah, I mean, so that's, I mean, like, a lot of this stuff is redone already. So, sorry, the roadmap. The roadmap is redo the cube map capture, redo the... Um, creature visibility checks and then basically the old fog of war should be able to be plugged into this new cube map setup and and then yeah maybe maybe then we can just put out a kind of broken version behind a build flag like, like a flag in the settings or something like this and you can start messing around with it um, there's a lot to do to make it work nicely in real builds right i can drag out a scene where it works reasonably well um also, we're going to make it look nice, and that's tough. Uh, tougher, Johnny. <laughs> so I might need to do some slightly different mesh generation style to be able to give us something we can work with a little more easily. Um, yeah. Okay, so we are we have crossed the hour mark. Um, I'm still okay to hang out for a little longer, so um, we can keep doing questions while they're there, and then when things slow down, we will we will wrap things up. Um, Any way of move, copy, delete, especially the last one, several minis at a time. Uh, by the way, thanks for the hard work. Oh, thank you. I have a party of eight, and I only four have a copy, and we stream for the rest. 
Oh, wow. That's really impressive that's been working for you. Well done. Um... Oh, there was a duplicate of the aquatic creatures question. Um... So, yes. Move, copy, delete several minis at a time. Yes, that is something that is on our roadmap. It's, we mentioned it in the last stream as well. Um, we're going to have a way to... this. Yeah, yes. There'll be a way to take a number of minis and group them onto a, sim a single base, move them around. Um, also, copy and paste will work with creatures in time as well. I haven't... The reason I haven't done that yet... Okay, so this is where things get interconnected, right? Is that currently... All, creature inf all creatures are stored separately from the board um, on in the database that we have for, t for Tailspire stuff. Um, this gets really tricky if you start, like, if you, were, if you build an army, for example, and then you grab that whole army and you move it, or you, um, or more likely you copy and paste a hundred creatures, what happens? Okay, so we have to update all those things in the database. Um, uh, I've just realized this is actually going to be really tricky to explain why the trade-offs matter. Um, but yeah, basically there's some limitations there with regards to how much we can feasibly update in a given span of time. And there are different implementations which are more more like how tiles work um, that mean we could do that much faster. So what you're going to see in future is that unique creatures... Um, the ones that you have, you make unique and end up in this panel, um, will will be stored on the database because they're the ones that can cross boards across the campaign. Right, you can move them from one board to another, and then anything that belongs to a board is going to be stored in a different way, which is going to allow us to uncap the number of minis you can have. Because like obviously right now, you're limited to 300 minis a board, and that means it's kind of hard to flesh out a town to be look really bustling and alive. Um, That's that. I think I... Was that the question? <laughs> yes, that's probably the thing. Um, seeing a couple of duplicate questions. The one about the aquatic creatures and about importing songs. Um, any plans for other platforms? GOG, Epic, or just Steam? Um, we would love to be on other platforms. We haven't looked into that yet. We're going to ship early access on Steam. Um, and then we will see what we can do for V1. That Because that's such a ways out still, um, we haven't looked into that. But again, we just want, want to bring the game to people. You know? um, Subfolders for NPC list. Um, well, the unique creatures... Yeah, I mean, it's... It's a good question. We need to look into that. Um... I can't remember if that's something we mentioned in the uh, feature request stream as well. Oh man, I need more coffee. I'm, 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 I'm running out, guys. I'm running out of steam. Ah, we can do this, folks. Follow up to my uh, question about free camera in build mode. I was thinking about not. Only when building, not while in play mode. Um, it is nice to get into hard to access places. That, so here's my gut reaction on that. That sounds like our building camera tools need work. Um, rather than going... Yeah, so my gut reaction is, can we make the thing we've got work better? Right? Can we find where those situations where it's hard to do the thing and make it so it's easier to do the thing? If that's not achievable in the end, then yeah, going to a completely different approach might be worthwhile. Um, but it's always always good to try and make something better rather than adding a new way of doing something. In general. Is there going to be torches to hang on walls? Yes, absolutely. Um, there's there's plans, some kind of notepad, bullet point. Um... We haven't got that planned so far. Um, that's for sure. I don't th think... No. No. Not right. N not yet. That's for sure. Uh, will be, are there any plans for environmental effects such as fog, mist, etc.? Yes, fog and mist are interesting. Because um, they're... 
if you're in first person, but you can kind of do it uniformly around the camera, uh, when you are you have a kind of God's eye view, um, it's, a, it's a kind of inherently volumetric effect, and volumetrics are very expensive in general. Um, so we have to make sure that if it's if it's story critical, it should be something that can run on various machines. Um, yeah, so it's a good question. But there will be, yeah, we are going to have weather effects. Um, and we are going to have more kind of incidental little um, effects that GM can place down. So there's probably things there that will overlap with what you're saying. Excuse me. Any ETA on chat being implemented? Don't have an ETA on it. Um, because generally, like, when we if we pick a date for something, it means that that becomes, like, we want to try and keep, keep to that date, which means that if something comes up, we can't work around. We can't reprioritize something. And if we do, then we're just making up dates, right? Yeah. Oh, it'll be here next week. Oh, actually, I have something to do. It's the week after. Oh, it's the week after. You know, like, it just feels bad. So we can say, yes, it's still coming. Chat is very important. Um... And it's going to be cool. But um, but no, I haven't got any TA for that one. In the new prop system, uh, we can freely place and rotate them. Any ideas about flipping them upside down? Well, you can freely... I mean, you can... I think the rotation is still done in increments. I've got to double check with Johnny on that one. I haven't heard anything on, like, full free rotation um, in that fashion, in flipping them upside down. Um... That's a good question, actually, because you can orient things to the walls. Johnny, any thoughts on this one? Um, ETA on when stuff uh, you mentioned in this update, like water, etc., is getting pushed out to us. Water and snow and desert next week. Um, everything else? Well, I mean, that's kind of the point in the post is everything, <laughs> everything else got delayed, right? Um... In the new prop system, um, oh no, sorry, I'm, I'm reading a question that I've already uh, I'm already asked. Sorry, this has been asked, but is there going to be a way to capture several parts of building and clip, and to be able to clip all of the places into another area? I one. Oh yeah, so um, basically clipping of slabs. Yes, that's that's planned. The slab builder tool was made by me. Um, and I didn't really understand what I was doing because Johnny does a lot of the uh, tool work. And so I copied a bunch of the stuff from tiles and kind of hacked it together. And it's not great. Um, it needs a lot of work. And it will get there. So that'll be cool. Um, I think... I think that's the list. Oh, another one can begin. Are slope tiles planned at all for more smooth elevation changes? No, I mean, like, um, no. In general, no. Uh, not for tiles. It'll be the, like, we'll see what um, makes sense in the terrain system for changing elevation and things like this. Um, that's where it feels, like, right now, that's where we are with, like, kind of where something like that would live. Um, and, yeah, then we'll go from there. Ah, so Johnny's saying no plans for allowing flipping in prop system. That makes sense, to be honest. Um... I think, I think that's it. All right. Well, that's kind of good. It's uh, been an hour and a quarter. Um, it's been, it, it's, uh, it's never, it's never fun to do these kind of announcements. But um, thank you so much for, uh, for basically looking after us, and um, making sure, <laughs> yeah, making sure we look after ourselves too. Um, thanks for backing the project and letting us do this. Uh, this is the coolest day job. I love just being able to get up in the morning. Like there, there isn't a day where I wake up and go, oh God, I've got to work today. It's, um, I just get up and get to make games and that is wonderful. And I know that is echoed by the rest of the team. Um, yeah. Thank you so much for letting us do this. Thank you for coming and hanging out tonight. Uh, even though we, there was so little of a plan and, um, for being so understanding with, the kind of the realities of what we're building and our own kind of screw ups in that as well. So have a great night. Um, I will see you all in a week. I will go and get this video as long as it captured properly. I'll get it on YouTube. 
And then I'm going to bed. And uh, I will chat with you in a week, and the others will see you around. So have a good one, folks. Thanks again. Ciao.